Good morning. This is Peter Coyote. You know, when I worked for Jerry Brown from 1975 to 83, and for four years I was the chairman of the State Arts Council, and we raised the budget of the arts in California from $1 million to $18 million. And to do that, I had to learn to talk to and respect people of every political persuasion. I had to learn to talk to conservatives, to right-wingers, to evangelicals, all, all sorts of people. And they had all sorts of ideas about who I was. But one by one, I made friends with them. And these were the people that saved the Arts Council, the three rock-ribbed conservatives on the Finance Committee, year after year, based on our relationship, voted the Arts Council budget in, sometimes over the objections of the state legislative analyst. Why am I telling you this story? I'm telling you this story because I had friends who were Republicans. My top ally on the Arts Council was a Republican named Carney Hodge, a clothier from Fresno, California, president of the American Symphony Orchestra League. Uh, my polar opposite. I was serving in blue jeans and work boots, and he was impeccably tailored and groomed. But when we agreed... We represented both poles of the council, and the council's policies went forward. And Carney was a kind of Republican that it was easier to respect. He believed in honor. He believed in the sovereignty of the people. He was vociferously against corruption of any kind. He, his views on the role of government were different than mine. But he certainly never saw government as an agency of repression or revenge. So whenever I think of the word Republican, I think of those people. Before COVID and before Donald Trump became president and before the Republicans as a party stopped governing. And I know from my experiences with Republicans on the council that there are a lot of fine men and women. We might disagree on the small stuff, but we, we agree on the big stuff. We agree on the rule of law. We agree that America is a wonderful country, imperfect, but trying to perfect itself. We agree on the sovereignty of the people. And so it's to those Republicans that I want to just ask you to consider before you vote this year in the presidential elections that your party's been hijacked by people that no longer represent your values. The extreme right, the MAGA right, has consistently forced moderates out of the party. They've been doing it for a long time. The uh, right-wing evangelical churches and the Pentecostal churches on the right are the foot soldiers for the MAGA election. And Trump's going to have to turn to them for more votes. It's the only place he can find them. So I want you to consider voting Democrat this year, this year, so it'll be safe to be a Republican again next year. Because if you don't, and if Joe Biden loses, the project for the, for the uh, Project 2025, the Heritage Foundation's 900-page document about remaking government is going to go into effect on day one. It's going to fire 50,000 civil uh, servants. It's going to replace them with loyal, loyal foot soldiers of the administration. It's going to put the FBI under the president's office. It's going to end all abortion nationwide, mifeprestone. It's going to work against women's right to choose. It's going to take us back to the 1940s and 1950s may not be what you want for your children and your grandchildren. So this year, this is not a contest between two old white men. This is a contest between two forms of government. Democracy, where if you lose or you disagree, you can continue to fight. And autocracy, which is if you lose, you're just out of play. You don't count. So just think about it in the privacy of the voting booth, just this year, vote Democrat, protect our democracy. Thanks very much for listening.